It is coming up on 740 News Talk, Saga 960, Raw Mike Richards, along with David Bastel. And for the first time ever, uh, we're going to talk to someone who's been on America's Got Talent. Because when you think about it, by virtue of the small number in the world that actually would kind of get on that stage and be talking to a, a Simon Cowell, uh, uh, Howie Mandel, that number technically, and I'm not a math person, which is why I do this, uh, that's got to be a small number. And so here's John Hastings, who uh, originally from uh, Ottawa, we will not hold that against him. Thank I'm you. Sorry. I I'm appreciate sure. it. John, we, uh, <laughs> I think you're also a Concordia guy too, which I, su I certainly am. Also, again, that, I think a first, maybe a first. <laughs> for the show so you have all this going for you and now you end up on the show which has just got to be number two or three i think on your list I, listen i'm at, i'm utterly thrilled i i just want to say you know someone broadcasting from Miss, mississauga criticizing yeah. ottawa and concordia <laughs> that is that is a that's a that's, that's a glass house situation yeah, yeah, if yeah, i've yeah, ever yeah. heard one yes it is how dare you be a boring <clears throat> suburb yeah. that's us <laughs> that's right and and now that, that's the earliest we've ever had a how dare you i think and also that's, as well it's true i like to start, you got to start one off fresh out of the gates you know what i mean you yeah, want to set yeah. a good tone for the day now uh by the way congratulations on your success i mean we, uh, uh, thank we, you we certainly appreciate uh, our stand-up friends who uh who in all various uh areas of this country in the united states uh, over in europe it is uh it is a very difficult craft and one that uh, in trying to determine success, sometimes it's just that thing that people need to do because that's who they are. Just being on stage, whether it's one person or 10,000 laughing, uh, it's just a part of that persona. What I thought was very strange, and I guess it's the way it is because of the pandemic, there you are in that giant uh, you know, studio with, with just the judges, no people. No people. So as, as a stand-up, so you know, in auditioning, you're you're what legit? You're you're playing to three people. Yeah, it was it was three people and a crew of about ten to thirty, depending on who was paying attention or not, unscrewing a light bulb. Because um, for for context, the AGT clip, which is now going wide, and anyone please go watch it uh, by searching John Hastings AGT on YouTube. Um, it was filmed the day LA went into lockdown. So literally. Gavin Newsom, the governor of California, is screaming on the news, go home, get toilet paper, the end is now, this is what we prepared for, yeah, sell, sell the house, burn the kids, no, not that order, the other order, I, either way, we're done now, and I'm sitting there just going, I hope Simon Cowell enjoys my jokes, do you think he'll <laughs> like my jokes? <laughs> so, it was a weird situation of, I didn't consider the situation I was in because I was too panicked about a the fact that my Australian festival tour had been canceled the day before and that was like most of my year's income so I was just like oh god I was like I wonder if I could kill one of these crew members and then sell their <laughs> organs as opposed to like I wonder how the show is gonna go and so it was this this nice byproduct of, you know, you you, uh, you guys are in radio, that moment of, I, I worked in radio before, and you never have a better show than when the PD comes in and goes, uh, after the show, we're going to have to air check you for 45 to 75 hours, and also, for the next week, you're not being paid. Check your contract. And then that's a great show, because you're distracted by all of these other things. You're not worrying about, okay, what's the next segment? We got to do the Friday morning fart song. I got to criticize Concordia University. Like, there's a bunch of things you don't need to think about because there's external concerns that are much bigger. <laughs> and I, as Howie Mandel says, the largest, the biggest talent show uh, in the world, unfortunately, with no audience. So it it's kind of worked out, and it's also nice that during the pandemic. I have uh, the opportunity to go around and kind of remind people that like one day there will be live performance again. Yeah. Mm. Please come see me. Mm. I've been forced into retirement currently. Yeah. Well, and, and there, um, and I think it might've been the Ottawa area where our good friend Rob Pugh, mm. uh, he had to do uh, like at, at a drive-in. Have you heard some of the shows where they've actually done drive-ins? Oh yeah, no, I've heard a bunch of my, um, my agent in the UK was organizing a load of them and trying to just sort of do anything. They've been since shut down in the UK because of health concerns and stuff like that. But 
Yeah, the, everyone's trying everything. I'm doing a show tonight in Montreal at the Comedy Nest. Uh, uh, and that's socially distanced, 50 people max. They take your temperature. You can only remove your mask once you're at your table. Like every comedian is going to use a different microphone, all of this sort of stuff. So people are, everything's slowly coming back now for no other reason than we live in a free market. And if they don't start opening up the economy, like it's going to yeah. be the grapes of wrath. Yeah. But in yeah. Canada, so we can't drive to California. We're just going <laughs> to, we'll have to drive to Saskatoon. And then, um, so it's an interesting situation, especially as a live performer, because it, you could really, I found this more, this was an interesting kind of like culling of, you could see within days, social media conversation scuttle, but people immediately shifted to, there's not, I, I think I might be done being a stand up. And they, everyone else was like, yeah, I got to go to a drive through and perform. Yeah, great. I, I have to, we'll do it under the ocean. Yeah, that, like, the, <laughs> it was very much, a, yeah, a separation of, uh, of who's going to stay and who's going to go, which is, I always find very interesting in these situations because some people Maybe. don't. Yeah, make those adjustments exactly. Hey, John, let's let's go behind let's go behind the scenes of America's Got Talent for a let's second. Do it, so, buddy. yeah, so so what we don't see on television. Do you do you, as as uh, as a performer? Because there's many different types of performers that that go on these style of show. Mm. Do you get a chance to interact with any of the judges after, or do they, or is it strictly you're on that side? You're on that side. Uh, the talent does not talk to the talent. It's, it's, again, the situation I was in was so completely different than I think anyone else doing it. And then I went to go shoot a couple of times in a week. And I, and I will say this, America's Got Talent, in the situation we were in, which was literally, it was the week of when the world went from being open to closed. Yeah. And they really bent over backwards in an effort to get as many performers seen by those judges as possible. So they were shotgunning anyone and everyone they could fit within legal time frames to get on that stage without having some union rep showing up with see-through socks and a thick Italian act. Yeah, you violated the situation. So the judges were literally watching uh, talent as much as possible. And just a glimpse behind the scenes for everyone listening. Television and anything that has to do with filming means that there is so much hurry up and waiting, it will blow mm -hmm. your mind. <clears throat> And this is one of the first things that there was none of that. It was literally like you got there and they were shooting like at breakneck speed to try and get everyone in front of the judges. So you, ne I never saw any of them. They were literally just sat in that theater. And then I assume gotcha. being sprayed down with Red Bull and then back out you go. <laughs> well, we're in conversation with John Hastings and uh, it's, it's interesting because you know, the, the something's got talent around the world, whether it's, and certainly the, 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 the British one, because the British one always seems very, very, the, the pattern seems to be very familiar. There'll be some guy who's so shy and, and like a, usually like a, like an eye problem, like a lazy eye or something. And he comes out and they say, where are you from? And he's like, well, I'm from you know, Sheffield or something like mm. that. What do you do? I'm a bricklayer. Okay. Um, <clears throat> go ahead. Let's see what you got. Ah! You know, and then they, then he hits this cra crazy, amazing note and, and, and everyone starts crying. Uh, it is so old school in its premise. It's 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 uh, you know um, so uh, it, you know like the old talent shows from the fifties and the sixties where you'd have plate spinners or you know a puppeteer or something like that. And what amazes me is that in this day and age where everyone's on their phone, where everybody is texting, it's a very a tech savvy world. People love this. Like they love the fact that your story is you're not because it's not just the stand up part of it, right? It's uh, it's your story of you, your mom, um, mm. you know, battling some 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 early difficulties. People, you know, it's funny. They it's like you turn the clock back and they fall in love all over again, which is kind of a cool thing. I think it's the one thing I actually really enjoy about the show. Yeah, that's a really uh, that's a really interesting point. Yeah, it is a very old school television concept in that it's literally just here's this performer he's gonna make you laugh here's a couple of things about him so you like him enjoy it, it's one of those things where it was a weird thing of i only watched the show after i got told i was doing the show because i'd lived in britain for many years and just britain's got talent i just never sort of watched it and right. then i was in nightclubs before that totally familiar with the show and it was an interesting thing where I approached it a lot more cynically where I thought it was going to be like American Idol and Simon Cowell was like spitting on a girl and being like you're bad bad yeah. bad 
And then you watch it and it's exactly that. It's, it's a much more of a, like, they do have people on there where it's someone dresses a buffalo and they're just absolutely not get out of here. But the lion's share of it is a lot more like, here's someone interesting. Here's what they do. Yeah. It's pretty good. Moving on. And it's that funny thing with media in that they keep, everyone ex, ex, thinks everything is new and it's the same thing over and over again. Like you guys are in radio podcasts are like the new hot thing of the last two, three years. They're just talk radio, but just done on your phone as opposed to on your radio. Like there's no, like there's no, nothing different with all of that sort of stuff. In the same way that America's Got Talent is essentially the Ed Sullivan show with four hosts that are the judges and it tours. Like it's nothing changes, but everything changes. So yeah, it's a very good observation. How do you get your audition? How, like, what's the foundation of of getting onto the show itself? Because I'm guessing that's a that's a tough hack right there. Just to, well, just to present. What 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 happened was my manager said, "Would you like to do America's Got Talent?" And I grew up a like a DIY punk in Ottawa, and I in my head was going, "No man, I I like the Ramones and Iggy Pop. I I don't sell out, man." <laughs> and then. I remembered that uh, I'm not a punk rocker. I'm a, <laughs> a dude in his 30s with a lot of Oxford shirts. And my job is to get in front of as many eyes as possible to get, encourage those people to come see me in a dank room. Um, and so I agreed. And then I had to film an audition tape the week of getting uh, the week of my wedding. And thank God I have a understanding and wonderful wife who as like, we need to get flowers, I'd have to go, I got to go film three minutes for a TV show. Um, and we, and I couldn't tell anyone at the time what I was doing. Yeah. She knew because like, if I didn't tell her, she would have been like, what are you doing? But yeah. everyone else was like, why are you doing, stand aren't you supposed to be entertaining your guests? And I had to be like, oh, you know, I, I love the stage. So yeah, <laughs> so I, I, you sent a clip and then they go through all of the stores you can offer, what you're going to do, stuff like that. And then, they come back and they give you a date of when you're going to show up and you film everything and then go in front of the judges and away you go. Gotcha. Well, the, the, this, also the story with, uh, and I believe I'm, I'm going to take a shot at pronouncing it, but dyspraxia, is that, yes. is that how it's pronounced? Correct. Um, I've never, not only have not uh, seen the word, word but it, it, the, the actual um, circumstance itself about uh, a lack of reflexes and hand-eye coordination. So as a kid, you know, when you talk about a, a you know, a, a fragility uh, in your own sort of psyche, uh, you know, your own ego, where I guess everyone else is playing hockey or they're playing football or whatever it is, is th th does that sort of a, one of the sources of where a sense of humor comes from you to deal with those kinds of things? Absolutely. Again, it's one of those things where Canada has definitely moved very quickly towards liberal progressive 21st century but the 90s especially like canada was essentially just a dude in a truck yelling a slur out of a window and then going to play hockey like it's it there's a like i lived in england for um almost six years and a friend of mine pointed this out who was also canadian which is british people aren't afraid to wear white shoes because a stranger isn't going to come up and scuff them <laughs> <laughs> and everywhere else in the world, no one gets that. And every Canadian goes, yeah, of course, you shouldn't wear white shoes. Someone's going to scuff them. Like what? Like, it's just, it's that odd thing of Canada was such a meathead. and still very much is in a lot of places, a very meathead kind of like, yeah, Gretzky kind of country. Like just the amount of dudes that just ref say we when referring to a hockey team. And like, listen, I like the Ottawa Senators. I like hockey fine. Do not say we, you're not in the front office. They don't <laughs> know you. Um, and so growing up around that meathead culture was very annoying because I was also, I'm huge. I'm six foot four um, or six foot three, depending on what ruler. Um, I'm super wide. Like I look like I'm a jock, but I'm not. And that would really piss off coaches because they would insist like, oh, he needs to play the yeah, sport. Sure. And then I'd show up and be bad. And then they, you know, they were unrequited you know, they're cops that wanted to be in the NHL and they couldn't make it because they suck. And <laughs> they'd have unrequited rage because I couldn't kick a ball or get a puck. And it's like, I didn't tell you I was good. You just assumed that I was. <laughs> so that was just very annoying. And I was very lucky in that I had 
a great teachers identified it, an incredibly supportive mom who never framed it as a like a as a failing on my part. It was right. just like, hey, you just got to learn how to learn differently. Don't worry about it. Like I didn't clue in that I didn't know how to tie my shoes until 29 until I suddenly finally figured out how to tie my shoes, which is the I just put them in knots and then just went for it. And then, you know, every couple of, you know, every couple of months, just like, oh, I can't wear those shoes for a couple of days. <laughs> my feet don't fit in them right now. And, and it's one of those things where I just hope that anyone with a learning disability or anyone, especially a lot of parents of kids with learning disabilities, because I didn't realize how terrifying that must be for them. Of They get told like, oh, he doesn't have any reflex. And they're like, well, what is, does that just mean he's just not going to be able to get out of the way of a moving car? It's like, no, it just... What in the world is that? That, that, that was a moving I got, car. I got, See, that was a I moving car, and you got out of the way very easily. I saw very easily. Life with a four and a seven-year-old, John. Oh, I just got to tell you, because David, yeah. that was, it was definitely a classic kid noise, but it was almost like you had a sound effects board in front of you, and I was like, I'm just going to scare the guest. Yeah. Uh, that's what happens when you watch Scooby-Doo upstairs. That's all. I Listen, I'm with you. They, the, the, those darn kids did it again. They stopped exactly. the old man. Um, but it's that thing of a lot of parents have reached out and gone like, oh, thank you for just saying my son or daughter has this. I, I didn't know anyone else had this. And it's this weird thing of like, every time I've mentioned it, I've done jokes about it on stage. People come out of the woodwork and it's like, me too, I have it. And it's not, there's no big deal to it. There's just such a stigma around any sort of learning disability. I think because guidance counselors are terrible people and they, they, make people feel yeah. bad for having yeah. ADHD and that bleeds out to dyslexia and dyspraxia and all these other things. So it's just like, you know, one of those things where get, get in front of, get therapy, learn how to cope with it. I had an amazing uh, educational therapist in Ottawa named Karen Ogston, who just like gave me the tools to figure it out. And, you know, I'm still desperately bad at a variety of things. And, and again, my, I'm now, turned it into I find it hilarious but people just assume because of my vibe I'm I'll put make a good mark I'm the worst pool player that has ever existed I cannot do it it's that is my that is my Everest it's your it's all I in coordination and understanding reflexively how to hit a ball. I can't do it. And everyone just goes, how, you, you, you must be faking this. And I'm like, no, this is, this is me top tier trying. Yeah. This yeah, is I not just, <laughs> if I could use a golf club, maybe I'd be able to do it, but no. And also no one should be that good at pool. If you're really good at pool, you're bad at your job. So yeah. that's, yeah. that's <laughs> <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> Oh man, I got to tell. Well, John, thanks so much for taking the time uh, to join. Thank us. you so much for having me, guys. It, uh, it's a great story, and uh, and hopefully, once the world moves beyond the pandemic uh, disaster that we've had, that uh, yes. we're going to hear from, uh, more from you. I mean, uh, this is uh, hopefully a, a, uh, something that uh, spurs on. And look, it's, it's it's such a it's such a tough business that even getting noticed is is really really hard. And and people say like uh, you know uh, uh, you know talking about an overnight success, and they go you know. All of a sudden, Sebastian Maniscalco just made it. Really? Yeah. That's how you see it? Yeah. He just all of a sudden hit a button, he went on stage, and he became very... I said, it's years and years and years, and you just hope it's something. The, the, the stars collide or whatever it is, and if this is it for you, for America's Got Talent, then I'm happy for you, that I'm really oh. thrilled for you. Very Thank thrilled. you so much. And guys, if you'd like to see the video that we've been talking about, just go on YouTube, John Hastings, AGT Search. It'll come up, or check out any of my social media at the John Hastings, and it will all come up. That is awesome, John. Best of luck, and hopefully we'll talk to you again sometime. Of course. Thanks, Thank John. you, guys. Cheers. Have a good one.